Bertie, she cries. I've missed you. I missed you too, I reply, squeezing her tightly. I should mention that she and Vince have just returned from two weeks in Hawaii, so this is the first time I've seen my best friend in a while. We spend a good hour catching up. She tells me all about her vacation, and I share my encounter with Brock, although I don't mention his name. Sasha listens wide-eyed as I tell her, and when I finish, she says, That's amazing. Good for you, Bertie. Thank you, I say, grinning. I'm pretty happy with myself. So when do you see him again? She asks. In my dreams, every night for the next few months, at least, I reply. I'm serious, Bertie, she says, laughing. So am I, I reply. Come on, Sasha, you know I'm not looking for anything serious right now. It was a nice dalliance, but that's all it is. I needed some release, and I got it. Who said anything about serious? I'm just saying you should make sure your needs are met. The auction, as expected, is a huge success. By the time we get to the sweetheart auctions, as we in Sweet Pine City call them, we've already raised about $45,000 for charity. There are four girls and three guys ahead of me. Their dates each sell for around three to $500. It's an exorbitant amount, obviously, but it's for charity. It also includes dinner at the restaurants who donated it, about $100 of actual value. Nobody actually thinks of these as real love connections. A few minutes later, I wonder if I have to amend that statement and say most people don't actually think of this as a real love connection. I wonder this because, when it's my turn to be auctioned off, the winning bid comes in at $15,000. That's a ridiculous amount of money, but it's not actually the money that makes me feel my date might want more than just to help underprivileged children. What makes me think my date might want more than to help the kids and help build a little hospital is that the man who paid $15,000 for me is none other than Brian. <laughs>